because um, COVID helped us to see who we truly are. Yeah. And that's what I wanted people to, to mm -hmm. feel. You know, the way that they cried. And this, yeah. You know, people experienced the whole world was sort of like yeah, forced to take a yeah, pause. You know? understood that no matter how high you climb in the social strata, we are all the same. That is it, yeah. You know, so I wanted people to see that. And I wanted people to understand that we must always remember to remember hmm. that we must not forget the okay. past. Yeah. And that it is not that we remember the past, it is also it, it also matters how we remember the past. Mm. So what we celebrated on Saturday was the courage, the resilience that helped us survive. Because people thought that Nigeria was going to be a graveyard. Yeah. Because and it was um, I I remember when uh, Bill Gates and his wife were making those uh, you know those projections and I mean Did they, they really say that? Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and for today I'm happy to be speaking to Agu Prince who featured in The Musings of a Madman which I watched a few weeks back and I was really excited to watch it because I haven't been to a play in Abuja in a while. The last time I went to see a play was like five to six years ago when I was in New York and I saw Wicked and I saw Shakespeare in the park, and I love it because, you know, I studied English literature, so anything art and drama, I'm always excited to go and see. And I really think that he did such a great job, and that's why after the play, I was like, let me look him up, and if possible, I really wanted to speak to a creative, like, and not just any creative, but somebody that's sort of like an artist, somebody that performs, and get their opinion on what that industry is like, and whether he's fully a creative or whether he does other things, like what is the arts and creative scene like in Nigeria and specifically Abuja, because I feel that Abuja and Lagos are very different. Anyway, let's get started. I just want to say I'm glad to be speaking to Agro Prince. Happy, happy to have you here. Thank you. Mom. <laughs> yes. So first of all, let's get started with um. How did you sort of like, tell me a little bit about your path as a creative, as an artist, because you didn't initially start in Abuja, right? You started in a different state. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, thank you once again for having me. Mm. Um, art for me is uh, something that uh, is innate. Mm -hmm. I've always loved um, creative works. Mm -hmm. I remember as a kid, I would sit in front of the TV and and write summary of the news. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, serious to about was always there. Wow. Know, the news and, mm -hmm. and I would sit in front of the TV and at 9 p.m. and just do a summary. <laughs> that was what my parents used to make us, the right <laughs> summary of things. You are doing it on your own. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, yeah. it was a really beautiful um, experience. Mm -hmm. So that endeared me to writing mm -hmm. and um, of course uh, if I go a little a, a bit further into my childhood yeah um, that would find me in the church where I grew up in and then we did a recitation skits oh really wow and, uh, and then I remember mm -hmm. at the time we we could uh, recite some one some one nine one oh some one okay. nine one you know from the beginning to the end wow and, all those sections that it did you know that it did wow my head did you desire okay so and um in primary school also i was also um exposed to drama mm -hmm. uh, when i go to secondary school i would do impromptu speeches all right you know, and, mm -hmm. um, so i've always been in front of an audience yeah that's how you grow up yeah. As, as, um, as an adult in mm -hmm. 2016, mm -hmm. I started announcing the idea of uh, setting up um, a literary group, mm -hmm. which led me to found what is today known as the Apa Poetry Club in 2017. Yeah, that's what you know, and um, it, it's still there. In fact, we are celebrating our 6th anniversary. Tomorrow. Wow! Um, Can you imagine? 6th anniversary. Wow! So, Look at that. Uh, so when I came Amazing. to Abuja in 2020, okay. um, before during I the pandemic, here, that's when you came to Abuja? Before the pandemic. Okay. Uh, I came here in 
well, during the pandemic, but before the lockdown. Okay. So um, when I came here, I because I've been exposed to, I already knew knew some people. Who, I attended the Kichu marriages, uh, man made God in twenty eighteen. Hmm. We came from Abuja to attend the show. So okay. So it, Abuja has always been a place that you know we saw as a center hmm. for art, uh, for art because of uh, ALS. Okay. You know, so well, when I when I came here, a friend of mine um, um, would organize events. Okay. Was running a church and uh, for the man who was hmm. So it was on the stage that I gave my longest performance. Wow. First time ever. It was a sixteen minutes performance, which I'm going to be staging maybe before the end of the year. Ah. You nice. Know, so I, and and uh, this is a different theme. Yes. Okay. Yes, cool. Yes. In fact, that for that one, I'm, the person I'm the, in, the, in that one is a, is an old man. So my character is an mm. old man. So it's just talking to society about the experience. Oh, nice. Night. So um, I call it the Great Grey. You know? The Great Grey. Yeah. Okay. So um, so that yeah that 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 and then in 2021 yes. I I decided to stage my own show, uh, Musings of the Madman. Mm-hmm. Um, 2022 we had. Another staging of that show, and this is the uh, 2023 is the fourth that time that we're staging it. So mm-hmm. um, I've, I've, I've always been around creativity. Mm-hmm. That's something that's sort of part of you, yeah. And I want to know: Are you a full-time creative, or do you do other things on the side? Because I think that sometimes in Nigeria it can be difficult. I'm not somebody that I can say I'm a thriving creative. Unfortunately, not yet. That's why I want to know, is this something you do full-time or do you do something else in addition to performing? Well, there are, there are other things that I, that I do. Okay. Um, I write. In fact, okay. currently I'm working on, I'm working on the first uh, book project for someone. Ooh. So I, okay. Yeah, I ghost write. Oh, cool. I'm also working on my own uh, project collection. Wow. But... Um, uh, yes, something. What gives me money is okay. writing. Right. Besides writing and um, ghost writing gives you money. <laughs> I need tips, so yeah. <laughs> I'm also trying. Yeah, of course, of course right. ghost writing. So I okay. write um, anything that you want to write. So okay. Proposals and all that. Uh, all right. Human writing, creative writing, and stuff. Okay. But uh, aside writing, uh, before now I I, I ran um, a clothing business. In okay. Right. I grew up in a Mm-hmm. So I ran a clothing business mm-hmm. right, called uh, Happy Prince Kucho, mm-hmm. and um, from 2014 till 2020 when mm-hmm. I came here, and um, my shop is still in Abuja. Nice. So, wow. You didn't want to have another shop here in Abuja? No, I'm trying since I'm here now, so I'm trying to also bring it here. Yeah. And, uh, establish something. In fact, okay. uh, by God's grace, we. Hope to launch for the end of the year. Ah, that would be amazing. Ocean. But I've, I, um, this is a very interesting question because mm-hmm. I have always been um, on this side of the argument, hmm. uh, you know, about the creatives uh, funding their lives with their creativity. I mean, mm-hmm. if you do it and it doesn't give you money, mm-hmm. then what's the point of doing it? Because it, there's always that argument about art for art's sake. Yeah, you know, just for the joy and fulfillment. Uh, so it's yeah, it, it's a thing. Yeah. But I think we also need to push it further. I've, I've had people say, if even uh, some people that I consider uh, very very senior colleagues in the industry okay. that say, hey, you have to get something to do it. Mm. My argument has always been, okay, why can't poetry give me money? Yeah. You know, why can't I write a piece or do a performance and people will pay of me course, to come of see course. it? Why can't people invite me to come speak and yeah. you know, pay money? So I think it's it's very possible and, mm-hmm. and honestly that is what I'm that is what I'm working towards. Yeah. And aside other things that I that I hope to do and hope to do. Mm-hmm. Because um that That's is the, the dream, way that we yeah. can sustain it. Yeah. You, you talk of sustainability, that is it. Yeah. The younger people, in fact. The, the the club that I founded in Naba at the point um, you you could see that um, that people were leaving they were getting opportunities they were leaving the city mm. you know but uh, thankfully other people are coming and all that but beyond that would be the family anyway so if you have if you do this and it doesn't people don't see prospects in it 
Yeah, yeah they're they're not in another thing is also for people to also look at um, the value added aspect of it. Yeah. So I'm a poet and then I, I stay and just write. No, there are things you can do. A poet can be a creative writer. Yeah, definitely. You know, a poet a poet can be an editor. Yeah. Um, there are different a ways poet to can diversify. be a songwriter. Yes. So so it's a lot of things that you can do just to find value where it is and mm-hmm. it. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. That's encouraging because sometimes I feel as though if you're in the arts creative field, it can feel difficult to sort of profit off of that line because many people don't value it. Yes, Especially maybe. a place like Nigeria, it's even more difficult. But I'm inspired by people who try to find different avenues, like, you know, to diversify their yeah. work and portfolio, and it's possible. You already answered a question I was going to ask you. But let's even go into the art scene here in Abuja. Unfortunately, I won't say that I'm somebody that's very familiar with the creative art scene. I would always imagine that Lagos is the center of creativity and all the cultural events happen in Lagos. But you said that Abuja is the center and the Abuja Literary Society. I feel like they're trying to do things which is good. But do you think that Abuja can become a bit better when it comes to that art, literary, cultural scene? Because I feel like Lagos seems to be the place where all the creative people are, where things are happening. Apparently, you go to cafes and then everybody is just like, all the creatives are there. What do you think about that? Um, 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 saying Abuja is center is, um, is in context. I said that we, okay. from Abba, we saw Abuja as a center. Okay. Um, Abuja is not a center. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, yeah. every, in every society, in every country, mm-hmm. you know, um, there are hot beds for selling activities. Mm-hmm. And when you talk of art yeah. in Nigeria, mm-hmm. you have to give it to Lagos. Yeah, um, definitely. And it's the reason is there because the art in Lagos is something that grew from it, from the, it, it, it grew with the culture. Okay. And, it, and it grew in the slums of Lagos. Okay, you are telling a different story now. Slums of it. Okay. Yes, it grew in the slums of Lagos. Mm-hmm. So we need to understand that. Mm. And then when we had the, 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 the first artistic deposition, major artistic deposition in this country was in Lagos, first time. Okay. Festival of Art and Culture. Okay. 19, I think 1977. Wow. You know. It's happened then, in Lagos. Yes, and then we uh, and then we also have the international uh, theatre is in Lagos. Mm. So everything is in Lagos. Can Abuja get there? Can we have our own art? Yes, Abu- yes. Abuja, Abuja can. And I've, and I've said this on yeah. different platforms that the the the, 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 the issue I have with Abuja is that Abuja is safe. Hmm. Abuja needs to chill. Abuja needs <laughs> to relax. Abuja hey. needs to open up. Okay. You know, um, if you go to Lagos, there are things you can do in Lagos that you can do. There are performances you can do in Lagos, you can do here because of mm. certain sense, kinds of sensitivities. Okay. So, um, if Abuja is cosmopolitan... Elaborate on that, certain kinds of sensitivities. Yeah. Like what? Yes, like like maybe issues about religion. Mm. You know, that's one. Isn't that the whole of Nigeria? Is it? It's, I don't think it's the whole of Nigeria. Okay. Um, Lagos is a unique story because you can tell it. You can, everybody can exist and do their own thing, but here there are lines you don't have to cross. Okay. You know, so, mm. and for me, when it In comes Lagos, to. In Lagos, you think you can exist and everybody can do their own thing? Yeah, yeah. Nobody is trying to censor least, you. At least basically, at least basically, at the mm. basic level, you okay. know, there is that level of um, um, uh, freedom, mm. you know, but here, it's not. Mm-hmm. So I so I think that uh, and yes, I want to say something. And, and for for art, for me, art is not something that you gag mm-hmm. because it is a means of expression. Yes, it is. And you have to let it flow. Yeah. So so each time you build walls for for art, it of course it will always find its way because yeah. art is like the army bar, you know. Mm-hmm. It's it's like water. So it can it will always find its way, but yeah. because of that wall, maybe the timing. Mm-hmm. We'll have to, yeah. So I think um, Abuja, Abuja needs to open up. Abuja yeah. needs to create, we need to create art for everybody in Abuja. Yeah, and people need to be more accepting of everybody's ideas, right? Yeah, and um, it's, it's, it's also not something you have to do for the elite. Mm. People come here and uh, the focus is on, uh, like what they're doing with comedy here, uh, they 
exotic. Yeah, like Nigerians, we love comedy. Around. I wish I were that funny because <laughs> ah, I would have blown. <laughs> but another thing is, it's Hi. it's also what I want to do with poetry is yeah, it's 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 um, more than what they are doing with comedy. Hmm. Yes, uh, I want to create uh, shows that anybody can walk into the hall and understand. Okay. The woman who sells tomatoes in the market, she can walk into the hall and find herself on the stage wow. because I'm telling her story. I so, so I think that that's that's what we need to do with, yeah. with poetry and and if we do that, people will to so make really it relatable. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you you have to open it up. It's not something yeah. that you have to do with a particular audience. Like yeah. And I think that as much as me, I love comedy. It's a good time. There's something that poetry does to you. I don't know. It just, it touches your heart. There's something that arts and literature does to you that comedy can't. Like, there's a certain way it makes you feel. I, I don't know whether I have the words for it. Okay. So sometimes I feel like we as Nigerians, or is it in Abuja, do we not appreciate art that just touches us? Like, that just makes us feel like... It makes you question life and meaning and purpose. That's the beauty about art. It's good to have a good time and laugh, but sometimes I think considering the whole aspect of life and meaning and purpose, that's what art, literature, and poetry does to me. And I feel like this is needed in society, not just for, for, for fulfillment, but for progress, for expansion. Yeah. It opens up your mind. That's how I feel. But that doesn't mean I don't like to laugh. Who doesn't like to laugh? But no. what I'm but, but what I'm hoping to create is yeah. the kind of poetry that will make you laugh. Okay. Not the one that will make you cry. Okay. No, I'm it sorry. Will make you laugh. It, it, it will make you laugh. It will make you cry. Okay. It will make you, wow. you, know, you know, that that balance. In okay. Fact, that, show on, on, Interesting. That, that show on Saturday was supposed yeah. to have a comedy. mixture of yes, comedic comedy, elements. But yeah. Yasman, my friend Yasman, could not make it. Okay. You know, he's, he's, he's one of the best comedians. Okay. Movie. You know, so it's 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 a kind of thing that I, and for the, for that show, mm -hmm. I I was trying something different okay. because usually it's me standing and saying poems mm. and doing going from moving it through character. Yeah, and then I expected doing, it to only be like a production with you only, but that's why I thought it was interesting. It was like I different to performance. bring other people to bring other creative energies mm -hmm. because the the thing that I love about art is art provides opportunity for. So mm. that we don't see it. Yeah. Collaboration is beautiful. Yeah. And uh, of course, people have been, people have been calling and so on. That was beautiful having all yeah. of those things. Was so nice. Um, and also after the last year, we had did some review and mm. found that hey, you have to work it and all that and then, we, and then I brought my friends. They yeah. my friends. And then, I mean, it was it was nice. What did you want people to actually feel from? Museums of the Madman, because I know at the end of the play you asked people about their different COVID experience. Yeah. What is the like takeaway? What did you want the audience to really get from watching you perform? So um, I wanted people to see 2020. Hmm. You know, okay. I, I, I wanted to, and I and I hope I was able to do that. You hmm. know, I wanted to take people back. Yeah. We are a society that forgets. You know, I wanted people to remember. Yeah. That though COVID was uh, 2020 was a very particularly was a very terrible year for me because wow. I was I was in between. Hmm. Uh, you were just coming to Abuja. Not even just coming okay. to Abuja. I thought I would be a little sooner after I left. But I the circumstance brought me to Abuja. Okay. So I was in between. I was on my way out. Hmm. And then things happened, and I found Ended myself up staying. in Abuja. And wow. I was trying to go and trying to push and. You know, but wow. so I I wanted people to if if, if I during COVID I started um, I started a series mm -hmm. that I called uh, Exile Notes. It's okay. On my Facebook wall, you know, I started a series where I told my experience of every day. Okay. So I was writing everything that happened to me every day. Mm. I cried. I was burying myself by everything that happened. Wow. You know, no holds back, nothing, because um. COVID helped us to see who we truly are. Yeah. And that's what I wanted people to, to mm -hmm. feel. You know, the way that they cried. And this, yeah. You know, the whole world was sort of like yeah, forced to take a yeah, pause. You we know? understood that no matter how high you climb in the social 
brother, we are all the same. That is it, yeah. You know, so I wanted people to see that and I wanted people to understand that we must always remember to remember hmm. that we must not forget the okay. past. Yeah. And that it is not that we remember the past, it is also it, it also matters how we remember the past. Hmm. So what we celebrated on Saturday was the courage, the resilience that helped us survive. Because people thought that Nigeria was going to be a graveyard. Yeah. Because, and it was, um, I, re- I remember when um, Bill Gates and his wife were making those, uh, you know, those projections. And I mean... Did they, they really say that yeah, Africa yeah, would yeah, be yeah, the worst place? They did. They did. They did. Okay. You know, and I mean, I don't blame them. They weren't saying it like they were going to hold them. Because they, they assume we didn't have the resources. Worry. Yes, the present world, yeah. you know. Because these guys fund projects here. Yeah, they don't they yeah, they do. their projects here. So, yeah. so they know what's on ground. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of people were afraid. and um, But at the end of the day, it I mean, it didn't go that way. In fact, uh-huh. COVID decimated the sophisticated healthcare, uh, healthcare systems. Mm-hmm. And uh, look at us. But yeah. the, beyond that, the most important thing is what did we learn as individuals, yeah. as government, what did we learn from COVID? Yeah. You know, because it that's prevents why prevents us from the next yeah. pandemic or whatever. Yeah, because as long be as better we better prepared. Yeah, as long as we, nobody knows. And God forbid if it happens, I yeah. hope Nigeria will be better prepared, there's, there's not no, that we'll be scrambling. No <laughs> there's, no, there's no God forbid. Ah. Things, things will always happen. Things now. always happen. But it's, 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 that's why I said during the, during, during the uh, I think a line there said that um, survival, to survive is not to be immune to the dangers, to the pressures of, of life. Hmm. To survive is to know the defeat of an enemy and to consistently apply the tactics. Hmm. It is sustainability. Yeah. To ensure that future generations are better equipped. Exactly, because of what has you happened know, in the yeah, past. To, that is how things should be. To confront the pressures of today. Because exactly. the thing that happened to us today will still happen to them. And, yeah. were, and, and you know, environmental pressures are also the way the way they they also evolve with the, the environment. Mm-hmm. So so it's it's uh, it's me trying to tell people to remember. To remember what happened in the past, yeah. yes. And also to learn from it. Yeah. And I felt like what I also appreciated about being in the audience was that sense of gratitude because people were saying that this happened to me, but you know, luckily they survived and not everybody was able to survive, yeah. unfortunately. And I think just that aspect of thinking about the past and being grateful for the fact that, okay, we all experience this in the world, but we were able to get through it. And it's nothing, it's not a small thing to be able to survive something that took some people out. It's something that I believe maybe because I like to go to spirituality a lot. I believe that it's something to be grateful for. And now I want to go into like talking about, you did an interview with Captain TV and what I found interesting was that you talked about how the government has a right to, I guess we've already sort of elaborated on this, how government sort of has a right to promote um, our culture through entertainment. And I thought that was a really huge and big topic and I really want to discuss how do you feel like the government can really promote our culture in entertainment? Because I feel like that's what Nollywood is trying to do. And I think Nollywood has improved. Because I remember in the past, the quality of the films are bad. But if you watch Netflix now, or maybe I'm already watching Wedding Party or whatever. <laughs> but if you watch Netflix now, I think the quality of films in Nollywood has improved. Do you think that that um, responsibility is for Nollywood only? But, or how can the government really sort of like take the responsibility of promoting the culture through entertainment well, uh, the, as an artist. What the, maybe the government should, uh, uh, first of all, Nollywood is not the government. Okay. But Nollywood is crying for government help. Hmm. Um, I think what we need to do is what the Americans did. Okay. You remember that um, as a kid, Probably in a list of uh, countries you want to go to or wish you were born in, mm-hmm. maybe mm. the US was born in. California. Um, <laughs> I wish. Now, I've, I've, oh, I've, God. I've seen interviews where mm-hmm. people, you know, social media content, where people are asked to name countries in Africa. Mm. And they can't name countries in Africa. Okay. In fact, the average white guy out there believes Africa is a country. Mm. Unfortunately, yes. you land in Africa. 
That's very really important. But, but you see, um, but, but we are here and we, we know America even more than most Americans know America because of what? Yeah, it's global. Yeah, it's you know, so Nollywood was for me, and I, and I, and I, I don't uh, miss words saying it. Nollywood mm -hmm. was a strategic communication tool of the U.S. government. Okay. They used it to communicate American values mm -hmm. to the world. Are we learning anything from it? Yeah. Um, um, a few weeks ago, I was I was at an event at the Chinese uh, China Cultural Center. Okay. Somebody who is the DG of the government agency stood up to speak, give his remarks, and then he told Nigerians to encourage Nigerians to to um, support their children to learn Chinese. Hmm. I don't know if you see that. Mm -hmm. a, a, somebody who is leading a cultural a cultural based agency. Hmm. The language is part of our culture. Yeah. Is encouraging Nigerians them to learn their own language. To support their children or encourage their children to learn Chinese. In Nigeria. In Nigeria. Hmm. And he did not balance it hmm. by, by asking the Chinese to learn Nigerian language. You see? What does that so, say? So so that that and and sitting in that audience I was I was livid hmm. because I understand the impact, the import and the damage. That is causing. Hmm. Now that is not to say that I mean I, I I love the Chinese and all, but we also should understand that we shouldn't be saying certain things yeah. as leaders. Yeah. So um what does it would, say about the value of yeah, So 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 Nollywood would have been something that the Nigerian government would have used to communicate Nigerian values to the world. Yeah. But but again. How many film industries do, uh, industry do we have in Nigeria? You have the Yoruba Nollywood, you have the Nollywood, the East, the Eastern Nollywood. Eh. You have, you have, yes, you have the Kanywood. I didn't in, know they were the separated. North. I just yes. thought yes, Nollywood. Yes, <laughs> no, no, they, yes, they, they are. Wow. So, so there's that, a Yoruba Nollywood. Uh, okay. Yes. Wow. There's a Yoruba Nollywood that does the Yoruba movies. Okay. There's a Kanywood that does Hausa movies or Northern movies. Oh wow! And there's okay. the main Nollywood that okay. does every every. Wow! You know, so but we're not doing bad. I heard that Nollywood is actually bringing in a lot of money for who? into Nigeria's economy, as far as entertainment wise. I think I read that maybe a few years back. Well, um, I just think that maybe Nollywood like needs I, to like me. Like I, we need I'm to not have that great. I'm a member of the Actors Guild of Nigeria. Okay. And I'm not saying that Nollywood is not doing anything. I'm just yeah. saying that. The, the government needs to support Nollywood. Mm, that's you it. know that's they, it. they need to support Nollywood. Yeah. So so if we talk about we talk about welfare mm -hmm. of actors. Yeah. Because whether these are run by whether Nollywood is run by the um, the acumen of uh, individual or private individuals, producers and all, these actors are also channeling our values to the world. Yeah, definitely. Which is why Nollywood also needs to be careful what it puts out there. Yeah. So the government should not just come at the point of censorship. Yeah. The government should also come at the point of creation. And let's have better storylines, please. Yes. Because some stories that I'm seeing, I'm like, how how did we get to this ending? <laughs> how did we get to this ending? You know? I feel like there's so much that you can do with a storyline and I feel like Maybe that's the writers, you know, the writers that we have. Let it make sense in a way. <laughs> the quality is improving, but that story is what we should that's develop. The, the, stories, the stories are also improving. There are, there are okay. really, really good stories out there. There are really, okay. really good stories out there. So, um, and be, but beyond the government, in fact, while I was on my way here, I said I was going to say this. Hmm. Beyond what government would do, yeah. it's also important that artists collaborate with themselves and, and help themselves. Of course. Because sometimes it's... Uh, that's why I love what is happening with the, in the music industry. Uh, of course, no. But you also, know that, you also know that that kind of uh, monopoly mm -hmm. is also very dangerous. Mm. Because what it, what it does is that it shackles creativity. Because one, two, three, four, five persons will determine what everybody consumes. Wow. Really? Yes. 
So, so for instance, if a particular dance step is raining, mm -hmm. and then it has to go with a particular story, <laughs> Okay. Particular lyrics, nature of lyrics, and, and then it has to do maybe it's a party jams that is burning and yeah. all, and everybody feels that. Of course, you know the content of party, party jams. Yeah. So everybody is talking booty and booty and booty and all, and and that's what is selling, mm. you know. So so it's it's also important that because uh, culture culture houses values. Hmm. So so if we are pushing like now, uh, okay, Afro Afro beat is Nigerian. Thanks to Baba Fela, you know, mm. and then people who are also pushing it, like this kid and Vivi and all. Yeah, you know, international. Have, you know, and yeah, of course, our own uh, Bona Boy. Yeah, we have to know? praise them a bit. You know? because so, they are, yeah. But it's also important what kind of values we are pushing through our music. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> It's, it's not just enjoying it. I'm still getting there. Not You have to consider the values. It's Very true. <laughs> that's a different conversation. Thank you for that, though. And lastly, I just want to talk about how can we encourage people who want to get in the field of art but feel as though there's no money and, you know, now the whole struggling artist stuff that everybody hears, how can we encourage, for somebody who is actually living as an artist and thriving, how can we encourage more people into the field of arts to be seen as a field that is want to be respected? Well, Last uh, question. Well, I, I would always <laughs> talk about building the yeah, because it's not it's not that you can stand on the stage. It's also about what you're saying. Yeah, that's true. Because what you're saying will mean more patronage. Yeah. If people are attending my show on Sunday and if you know oh, this guy makes sense, mm -hmm. you don't have despite everything. I hope at least what he said made sense. Yeah. It means that if I put out flyers tomorrow, one, two, three, four, five persons will come back. Yeah. And that is how you. Um, but for people who don't even, I feel like maybe I'm thinking about people like students who haven't really figured out what they want to say, what their voice is, but they feel as though, oh, this is my passion. Because I, I love talking about passion. How do we encourage them? Because, you know, in Nigeria, people try to sway you into science. You know, we love the doctors, lawyers, engineers, and that's a great profession. But if somebody says that they have this aspiration to be a writer, how can you encourage them? Well, the thing here is this. It still falls back to what I'm saying. Okay. Because capacity building is for everybody. Whether okay. you want to start or you know. Okay. Um there is the God mix, because we can also also not forget it. Of course. But before the God mix, yeah. You have to be you, you have to be good now for somebody to I, I didn't just pack people to bring them on stage. Mm -hmm. You know, I these are people that have followed their their work, their work and I know that talent. they're going to suit what I'm doing, you mm -hmm. know. So, uh, so it's also very important that you build capacity, yeah, and then you build friendships, collaborations. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a lot from you, yeah. Um, and if you can get a job, please get a job. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, please get a job. You can do a business, please do a business. Yeah. Why do you push? Your you ads. We have you to know? be realistic. With yes, this, right. You just have to be realistic. This is not uh, Nigeria. Is yeah. Not, during, during COVID, some some countries like Germany, I know. They were paying the artists. Mm -hmm. But in Nigeria, it's not like that. In fact, the diamond industry went more important during COVID. We went mm -hmm. on the ground. Apart from maybe people who were courageous enough to be doing skits and all. But, mm -hmm. it, but generally, it went on, nobody was doing exhibition, art exhibitions or anything. You know? yeah. Except people who were doing online exhibitions, which is also a very uh, new thing. Yeah. So, uh, believe in your art. Yeah. Believe in your art. People are going to tell you that, oh, this is your material. Or oh, oh, poetry has to sound this way. And that is what me, I don't like. You know, mm. people are going to say, oh, so, okay, spoken word, like, I mean, every spoken word artist I know sounds almost, they almost all sound the same way. They are always channeling the American accent and all that, and all that, <laughs> and all that. but hey. people need to, you need to find your voice. Find your voice. Find yeah. your voice, know your yeah. art, build capacity, yeah. build uh, friendships, relationship, collaboration, mm. understand the power of collaboration. If you have people who you know have gone ahead of you, and Art. You can also partner with them. Partnership is very important. Mm -hmm. Reach out to organizations, be bold about it, write proposals. Hey, I want to do this show. Hey, uh, I need so so and so to do it. It must yeah. always be money. You know, be bold about it. Meet people. There are people out there who are waiting for very, you know, crazy ideas, very lovely yeah. ideas to put their, 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 their money. It, it, it's not like doing it, may not be that they're doing it for profit. Yeah. Profit may not be material for them. But what they want to see is what, what impact 
that thing can do because it's yeah. it's the mind. Even if it is one person that is affected during the show, mm. it's just yeah. it. so don't be just afraid to push it. Don't don't, they, don't don't say there is no money in it and then you won't do it, please. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much. Can I ask you what's happy prince? Your stage name stands for are you willing to share that? <laughs> oh no. Um, You're not willing to share. Um, happy prince is actually is a very sad story. Oh, yeah, tell me. I like to cry. It's let's, very, yes, yes, yes. That's it's a it's a very sad story which I'm not going to tell. Oh. Maybe I'll tell it in my book. Okay, <laughs> stay tuned for his book there. Maybe we'll do another interview. Thank you so much for joining me. You're doing a good job, and you are definitely inspiring me to really come out to watch more plays, watch more performance, and even try to create something of my own. Maybe in the yeah. future, God willing, I see myself. I I feel like I have a play in me. I feel like I have a book, a play, and a movie yeah. with me, whether anybody believes it or not. <laughs> book, play, movie, by God's grace. Yeah. I was happy to have this interview with you. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you on my next video. Bye.